Hello everyone, Fire and Further here, and I would like to do a quick video on a high fender mod. Um, the reason being is that um, there are a few things to consider before actually upgrading. Okay, so I did my high fender modification because of Dynamic Rally, where I thought there's going to be a lot of mud, and people say the standard guard would pack up with mud and break. Now, well, I don't really know. The thing is, the high position on the standard guard is actually quite high. And yes, I saw people packed it up with the mud, but uh, you know, you, you, during normal travel, mm, not really. So I did another rally and that had much more mud. And one thing to consider with a high fender modification is that there are two sizes of the um, fender you can buy. This is Aterbis Supermoto one. And the reason why I got it is because it's the same size as the OEM one. Well, it turns out that that is quite short. And what happens is that if I install the standard one, like that, the mud and all the crap actually hits the, the guard somewhere on here and just drops down. If you don't have that, it just flies in the front and the wind picks it up and smacks it in your face. That's exactly what happens to me because there's nothing to protect it and the supermoto is too short in terms of that direction. Okie dokie, so this is the splatter pattern of the Acerbis uh, supermoto guard and we have um, mud all the way up in here and the most important is that it actually goes all the way up behind the guard itself um, onto the radiator. And all this, I mean, the good thing about the OEM griddle is that it protects the uh, radiator quite effectively, but still you get the mud all the way up to the height of the fender itself. The mud guard itself didn't do really much in this case because there's, yeah, there is some mud, but most of it is on the bash plate and the radiator. So I'm not entirely sure this setup really works for um, anything else than being cool and okay, not breaking the, the OEM uh, mud guard. After I have established that the short mud guard in a high position is no use at all, um, I put back the OEM low fender and in the name of science, I went out and searched for mud for almost two weeks now. Um, trying to pack it up and trying to get mess everywhere. Unfortunately, I tend to just wash the bike after <laughs> on the trails. But finally, I have enough mud and I have a good sample. So let's have a closer look on that. I think it's much better. The bash plate is packed with mud again, but that is obvious. Um, the main difference here is in the radiator and the griddle, which is not clean but it's not having two centimeters of mud on it as it had with the high fender. So I think this is definitely plus one for the low fender. What's the problem with the low fender? Okay, if you find yourself riding through sticky mud, which has a right consistency, so it's not too wet and it's not too dry, it's gonna pack up the tire and it's gonna pack up inside the mud guard. It can break it. That's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that you just ride, it packs up and locks up the wheel and you are kind of flying off. Now, I have really tried to find around here the conditions to do that. And to be honest, it is pretty tricky because either it was too wet, which means that the mud was just flying off or it was too dry. And even if it was a sticky mud, I didn't manage to pack it up with that. I had this amount of mud on a tire still okay. Now, in my case, there's one huge advantage with the low fender, and that is that my brake lines are actually changed because I needed to do that for the high fender, and I don't have the system which Yamaha put that from the right caliper there goes a brake line to the left one. I have two separate brake lines to each caliper, and that eliminated the over the wheel brake lines and I think that's kind of a game changer in this setup. You can now with six screws take everything off and there's nothing above the wheel 
comparing to the stock configuration where you would still have the brake lines, not to mention that actually taking everything, the guard off, if you have the brake lines, a pain in the butt. So I think that's um, one of the crucial changes which makes this setup viable. Now, the last thing I need to do in the name of science is to test this big boy. A normal size mud guard, which should actually work even in the higher position. The only problem with it I see is that the tenere is not going to look like a tenere, but more like a unicorn. Well, testing of the high fender, the long one finished and it went quite well before it fell off. Um, but until that point, it behaved really well, much better than the short fender. So um, definitely uh, improvement. There's a lot of mud in here because it sits much longer. All the mud which is get flicked by the tire um, is captured by the fender and it's not going to fly to the front and then back to the rider. Now there's still some mud which will hit the rider more than on the low fender, but it's manageable. I think it is manageable. Another good point about um, this fender is because it, if it sits around here like that, um, it goes quite low, which means that it protects the radiator quite well. Um, in terms of mud on the radiator griddle, ignore <coughs> all this because that's because I lost the fender. But it, when it was attached, uh, this whole area has been very, very, very clean. Um, what has happened is there was a buildup of mud here. And as the fender sits quite close to the griddle, it starts rubbing on it. But uh, apart from that, that's, that's pretty good. So I think um, that's also a good uh, change from the um, short fender, which was ending somewhere around here. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's for the long one. And the conclusion of the weeks of testing the fender options. I tested four, one accidentally, and that was the no fender option, which I don't recommend only for emergencies because it gets messy. So that's out of the way. Um, I started with the short high fender. This is a supermodel one. Just for the size difference, this is the normal, this is the short one, and this is the OEM one. This doesn't work. Uh, I spoke about that before. Splatter pattern is too big. It, it may look good. It may work for the dry conditions uh, when you actually don't need it. But other than that, mm, not really. So that's out of the way. I then uh, switched to the normal size high fender and that worked pretty well. If high fender, then definitely the long one. The only issue I can see potentially, but I haven't been able to test it because it's winter, is that because the radiator sits above, about this high and this is quite wide, it blocks substantial area of uh, the radiator. So the bike may not cool that efficiently, but Mm, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, this works. Don't waste money on a short one. If you want the high fender, buy this big one and make the Tenere look like a unicorn. And it's gonna be a pretty nice unicorn, by the way. So, um, what I'm gonna use uh, after all this testing is the OEM short, short and low fender um, in the high position over there. It works pretty darn well. It's really difficult to pack with mud. I tried, I really, really tried. Um, and of course, there will be places in the world, in Nepal comes to my mind when I was all Russia, uh, where, you know, that is gonna be a danger. But, because I did the modification for the high fender, I had to change my brake lines and these mounting points are not attached to anything anymore. There's no brake line over the wheel, which means that there's six screws to take this off and happy days. And uh, it's pretty safe and I can take this off for a short stretch and then I put it back. So for me and for my travels, this is clear winner with the modification of removing the brake lines. So yeah, there you have it. Now I need to 
keep continue cleaning the bike. I hope this was useful. Any questions, please, I'm happy to answer. See you later.